Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. Lee here. Listen, um, in this video, I want to kind of do two things. One, I want to give you a little bit of a snapshot of the current situation I'm in personally. So a little bit of a life update of where I'm at and where we're headed um, as a family and some different things there. And then I also want to um, end this particular video with an encouraging message. Uh, I'll keep it brief. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll see what happens with that. You know, I say I say brief and then we end up going 45 minutes. So, you know, we'll see how it turns out. But I do want to give an encouraging word um, from a particular text in here that um, is on my heart and I want to encourage you with it and then pray it over you um, at the end of this video. So stick around for that. Now, to kick us off, let's hit the practicals. Number one, um, it is no surprise that um, it's been kind of quiet around here, this YouTube channel. It's been kind of quiet. Um, and that is for good reason, I promise. One, let me um, tell you a little bit about how this YouTube channel started and the purpose behind it. And that'll give you some insight um, before I get into some of the practical reasons why it's been a little bit quiet around here. Number one is when I started this YouTube channel, goodness, probably in 2020, somewhere in there, 2021, um, I did it for, um, I did it as an outlet for me. Um, and it was an added bonus if anything that was uploaded uh, added value to people. I did it at the beginning because there were things in my mind and my heart that I needed to that I needed to get out. Um, and writing at that season of life, I love to write, by the way. But in that season of life, um, it wasn't something that was um, that I had the mental space for, or even the time, unfortunately. So I was like, let me record these things. And YouTube was supposed to be my kind of my archive for what, what the Lord was speaking to me and doing to me and the things that I was seeing in God's word that I just felt like I needed to regurgitate um, as a form of learning and encouraging my own spirit. But also YouTube being a public platform, it was also a double win for anyone that might stumble upon it and uh, be edified and encouraged. Today, there's 1,600 of you, um, almost 1,700 of you who um, have joined in on that journey. Um, and I've received a, an overwhelming amount of encouragement and edification from you guys um, that the content is blessing you guys in various ways and that the Lord is using the content to um, edify you and strengthen you in your own walk with the Lord and even your own biblical literacy. And um, over the years, I've I've kind of shifted its focus and and different seasons, and and some of you have been a part of those changes um, throughout time. But it's always remained centered on on growing our inner being. Um, how should I say it? Christ being formed within us. Galatians four nineteen has always been the goal for Christ to be formed within us. Right. Um, that's always been my hope and my desire is that um, we would we would all progress on our journey of sanctification that Christ, that spiritual formation process where Christianity extends beyond just words or intellectual uh, concepts that we adhere to or agree to, but it actually, the Holy Spirit comes and does within us what only He can do and changes us and transforms us from the inside and then the outside. And um, and so many of you have voiced your um, gratitude and voiced encouragement to me um, that the content has done just that for you. And for that, I'm just eternally grateful to the Lord to be a small part of your journey. And um, my prayer is that this channel would continue to glorify the Father and edify you. And so at the beginning, I started that. And it was really, as I mentioned, for me to have an outlet and an outlet that would hopefully bless people. But I wasn't doing it for an audience. That's what I'm getting at here. I wasn't doing it to grow a YouTube channel I wasn't doing it to make YouTube a stream of income. Um, I wasn't doing it for any of that. I genuinely didn't really care if anyone ever subscribed 
because at the end of the day, it was something that I felt like I needed to do as an outlet to express what the Lord was showing me. Since that time, um, 1,700 of you nearly have joined um, this channel's community, and man, that has been awesome. I'm so grateful for the community we have here and the support and the, the engagement and the conversations we get to have even outside of YouTube when we do Zoom calls and different things like that and I get to meet and interact with a lot of you. It's been awesome. All of that to say, I still operate in that manner. And here's what I mean by that. I don't create YouTube videos if the Lord hasn't spoken something or placed something on my heart to share. I'm not a content creator first. I am a pastor, Bible teacher, counselor, carer of souls. I'm not a content creator. I don't feel the pressure to continually pump out videos to keep up with YouTube's algorithm so that YouTube shows this channel to more people. My philosophy is if the content is good and edifying, you'll show more people, you will share, and the word will get out organically and authentically. I don't care if YouTube puts me in their algorithm. I don't care about growing a YouTube channel. Um, and so with that, I'm not on a regular video um, uploading rhythm like other YouTube creators that are just constantly cranking out content if that's what the Lord has called them to do, they should do that. But that's not at this time what God has called me to do. And so there will be seasons where there's a lot on my heart and I have a lot of time to sit down and do this and get my thoughts out and edit and create thumbnails and write descriptions. That takes a lot of time and energy. So if any of you are out there watching this and you're like, I love to create thumbnails. I love to write YouTube descriptions. Um, I can help with all that. Well, then maybe I could create more videos. Um, because I could just sit down and get my thoughts across and focus on actually forming the content and delivering it and not have to worry about editing, creating thumbnails, and doing the practicals that come with every single video upload. Right now, um, all of that's on, on um, a part of the agenda whenever a YouTube video goes out. So for me, there's seasons where there's a lot um, to say and I have the time and mental capacity to do all the practicals involved with putting out a YouTube video. And then there's other seasons where there's not a whole lot the Spirit's asking me to put out publicly. And, um, and I, quite frankly, I don't have the time or mental energy to do the practicals that go along with each video, as mentioned, the thumbnails and all of that. And so there are seasons where you won't see a lot of uploads from my channel. And, um, and so that's part of the reason behind it, my philosophy behind it. I'm not, I'm, I don't feel the pressure to constantly create something. I want the quality of the content to be good. That is the message of the content to be good. I don't want it to ever get to the place where it's like Lee's just putting out stuff to keep videos uploaded. So YouTube will jump on the algorithm and show him. No, I, no, I don't. That's not, I don't care about that. I would rather... You know, if any of you know me, I would rather um, keep a small, low profile than a bigger audience. That that's that's not attractive to me, and so that is kind of partly my philosophy there. But then, the big practical. My family and I, since January uh, of 2024, and I'm making this in mid August of 2024 have had major life changes. And um, they've all been amazing, wonderful, just a, a beautiful things. But they have demanded a lot from us, uh, especially in this time. Now, I'm going to share one of those things with you. And there are um, some elements that we're going to share sometime in the fall or fall or winter. Um, so late 24 early 25. And I'm waiting on my wife and I to feel like the timing is right um, to sit down together and record a video um, sharing um, the details of one of the biggest things that has um, affected our life in 2024. And we've had to put a lot of time and energy and thought into that. 
And um, you know how life goes. When one thing comes in, you have to rearrange everything else and everything gets new priorities and gets a certain amount of energy and attention to it. So there's a big, a big announcement coming at some point in the near future with me and my wife together. Um, but on top of that, I'm also back in graduate school. I'm pursuing a very high level graduate degree um, that leads to state licensure within the field that I'm studying. And, um, and I have um, taken on a little bit more of the work, like a few more courses each term than, the, than is designed for the sake of moving along with the course and the program. And, and that has been amazing. That has been awesome. I'm loving every second of it. But as you can imagine, um, it's a lot of work. It requires a lot of time and study. And uh, I'm going to reveal to you the field that I am in and that I am studying and the licensure credentials I'm pursuing when I make that video with my wife because um, they go hand in hand. So August through December of this year um, is a very heavy semester. I'll be in the books. January through December of next year is a lot of, um, let's call it field work. So I'll still be in the books quite a bit, but I'll be in the field uh, doing a lot of required trainings and different things. And so next year, we'll see what time looks like for me. And even in the fall, we'll see what time looks like for me in terms of how it affects YouTube. I would love more than anything to have time and space to be here with you guys. I love the Zoom calls we've been doing, and um, we haven't even been doing that on, on a large scale. So if you're interested in joining us in Zoom calls and different things like that, identify yourself in the comments below, um, and we'll create some sort of a system. It's been a pretty small group, pretty quiet. Uh, just trying to feel things out, but that's been so fulfilling for me. Um, so I'd love to have videos coming out more regularly, but give me grace as you know a little bit now of the things we've stepped into and more information on that will be coming for sure. So that's where my mind has been, my head has been. That is partly to do with uh, why it's been kind of quiet here um, on this channel for the last uh, half a year or so. We'll see how things change as it goes on. I can't make you any promises because again, um, I really do follow what the Lord is putting on my heart. And if, if there's nothing there, I'm not gonna just try to create things for the sake of creating things. Um, and so, okay, that's that. I think that's all I needed to share in terms of my life season where I'm at, where I'm headed. That's that's good for now. There will be more updates and announcements like that moving forward, I'm sure, as, as timing becomes appropriate. So, you know, stay on the lookout. If you haven't already, subscribe. Turn on the notification bell um, because that'll let you know whether or not I've posted something if you're interested. Because I don't post all the time, uh, YouTube algorithm um, doesn't do me any favors doesn't do you any favors if you're interested in this content. In other words, I may post and it YouTube may not show that show you I've posted if you're relying on your YouTube feed. But if you have the little notifications turned on, YouTube algorithm is taken out of the equation and you're just gonna get notified that this channel has new content. So I encourage you to do that. Um, okay, let's share something that's on my heart now, as promised with scripture. At our church, um, we conclude with one of my favorite texts each week. The pastor, um, you know, will we'll bless the people, and the people will pray, and we all kind of pray this particular verse together. Um, and it's awesome. It's one of my favorite verses um, in the Old Testament, and I kind of want to talk about it today. Forgive me, I'm not going to have it on the screen. It's Deuteronomy 30.16. I'm going to read it. Um, and there's a few things I want to point out about it that um, I want to encourage you with that um, I think are important for, the, for this season, for the days we're walking into. Um, let's just read it. Uh, Deuteronomy 30, verse 16. 
for I am commanding you today. And first, I want to stop and note that this is a command. This isn't a suggestion. This isn't a, a barter, a trade. Hey, if you do these things, I'll do these things. This is a command. So remember that word. This is a command. This means you have the voluntary choice to exercise your will on whether or not you're going to partner with God in the following things. Okay? Completely voluntary. I'm commanding you today to, one, there's three things. There's three commands here. One, love the Lord your God. That's number one. Two, walk in his ways. And three, keep his commandments. His commandments, his statutes, ordinances. Okay? So, number one is love. Love the Lord your God. This doesn't refer to the emotion of love, right? How we tend to think of it in the West, where it's just, we have this feeling, this emotional connection, this emotional um, um, drawing towards, right? This isn't any of that. And the reason I can say that is because that kind of love is an involuntary emotion. The Lord gave us a command, which we established at the beginning, is involuntary choice. Involuntary? It's a voluntary choice. Forgive me there. The command to love means love is a voluntary choice that you and I get to make. We can either love or we can hate. Hate would be the opposite end of the spectrum of the biblical term. Now, these two biblical terms, I'm not going to do a whole teaching on love and hate here, but we're tempted to think of them as an emotion. We're tempted to think of them as hate being a disdain for, a disgust towards uh, the way we feel about someone, a great dislike. Um, that's not what the biblical, our English term is hate, but the biblical Hebrew word for love and hate, it's actually, yes, you know, Hebrew words are one Hebrew word. They have a very small vocabulary bank. I think it's like 2,000 words total. So they'll take one word um, in Hebrew, and it could mean a couple different things that are unrelated based on the context. So yes, while this Hebrew word that we get and translate to hate very much can mean those emotional things, in the context of loving and hating people, for example, um, Isaac I loved, Esau I hated. God's not saying he had a disgust and a disdain for Esau and, and hated his guts, you know. Uh, when, um, I believe it's Jacob, is it Jacob or Isaac? Um, might be Isaac, um, had Rachel and Leah, and um, it talks about loving Rachel and hating Le Leah, Leah, whatever her name would be, all right? He, he didn't have a disdain or a disgust for Leah. It just means there was an unmerited favor towards Rachel that, um, that Leah didn't have. Same with um, Jacob and Esau. God had an unmerited favor, this love, towards Jacob that he didn't have towards Esau. Now, again, there's more nuances that are desperately needed. We can do a study on love and hate later. The point is, there's this choice to love, to have favor for. It's very closely connected to um, uh, um, chesed and agape love, the um, unconditional kindness, the selfless humility that considers others as more important than oneself and extends favor and mercy upon someone, especially someone undeserving of such things right? So when we have this command to love God, um, it's not a command to like feel a certain way towards God. It's a command to bless God. The way we love God um, is through loving his son in a New Testament context and loving his creation, his people, right? And so that comes through charity comes through humility, acts of kindness. They're very tangible deeds of compassion, okay? It's not a tolerance. It's not a, we'll keep the peace because we want to love our, you know, love our enemy but hate the sin. No, it's, they're very tangible acts. It's very intentional. Compassion is very much, and charity is very much interconnected with love. So how do we love God? Um, we love, accept, and follow the one he sent, right? And we love other people. That's how we love God. We bless people. We do right by people. We extend compassion. We give generously. Um, we, we, we walk in acts of charity for other people, all to the glory of the Father, 
That's how you love God. Okay? So that's command number one, love God. Number two is walk in his ways. Okay? This refers to righteous and holy conduct. Okay? Walking in his ways. What does this mean? It means you uh, you begin to learn God's very character and nature. You begin to learn how God thinks and how God acts, and you walk in those things. You mimic those things, right? You become holy as he is holy. So you begin to you begin to learn about God seen through Jesus and you begin to mimic him. All right, rabbis their main prerogative for their talmidim, their disciples was that they those disciples would think like them and then live like them once they had died. They were creating little clones that basically would would continue on living a life from a worldview and from actions based on the rabbi's character and nature and who he was is now extended through his disciples. This is how it is with Jesus, right? Jesus shows us the very image, character, nature of God, loving, kind, gentle, compassionate, slow to anger, right? Um, fully righteous in his deeds and choices, wise, all of these things. And we are to, in following Jesus, learn about our God and then walk in those ways, live live like our God, a take on his character. And that's part of what the New Testament are, is getting at with lay, letting the old man die and putting on the new man and walking in those ways, right? Okay, and then the third one is obey. Keep his commands, his ordinances and statutes. All right, and this is just obedience. Obedience that derives from faith and belief. If, if, if God says something, and you trust him, it, the fruit of that trust is obedience, right? If he gives commands and statutes and ordinances and says, here's what I want you to do today. Here's how I want you to give your money. Here's how I want you to live your life. Here's how I want you to respond. Here's how I want you to act. All of these things are commands, right? His statutes and ordinances that he gives for us um, that we should obey. Our obedience is a is a sign of the level of faith and trust that we have and the level of surrender and the level of um, dying to ourself and living unto Christ that we are walking in. And so these are the three things. And then here's what it says. So that you may live and increase. So that you may live and increase and the Lord your God may bless you in the land that you are entering. When I hear this, so that you may live and increase, I think of Jesus' statement, I have not come to give them life, but life abundantly, right? And obviously there's there's a whole lot packed into that. That is, it, yeah, that <laughs> we can't get in today. Um, but I think of that because it says, so that you may live and increase life, and increase into an abundant life. This is spiritual, mental, uh, emotional, material, um, and then it speaks of the age to come as well. I believe that as we love the Lord our God, we keep his ways, we obey when he speaks and, and listen to what he's spoken previously through his word, I believe we will not only live, but we will live and increase. I believe that's a promise that he has for us and what it, so my question is, what is it that he's asking of you now that you have not stepped into obedience? What is it that um, are you loving God? Do you know what that means? Maybe that's one of the things we need to do a study on. How do we actually love God well? Are you walking in his ways? Well, you can't walk in his ways if you don't know him. You don't know his character. You don't know his nature. Have you spent time studying your rabbi? Have you spent time studying who God is at the very foundation of his being. Do you know his character? Do you know his nature? Do you know the way he thinks? Because if you don't, you'll never be able to walk in his ways. And then are you obeying when he speaks to you? Are you obeying, as I said earlier, the things he has spoken already through his word? Because if you are, if, if you are doing these things, there's a promise that goes along with them. You will live and increase, right? And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. I believe that you will live and increase and the Lord will bless you. I believe that. I believe these words are true today because I believe 
God doesn't change, and I believe it's his character and his nature to bless and to um, to increase and to um, to help us enter into that abundant life through Christ. That is promised to us, not just for the age to come, but even today. And I believe these things are relevant. And I don't know what 2024, the rest of this year holds. I don't know what 2025 has or beyond. Could be very, very difficult times. Could be very prosperous and abundant times. But I believe that even if times are to be difficult, I believe that those of us who are committed to loving the Lord our God, walking in His ways and obeying His voice, will live and increase no matter what society looks like, no matter what culture looks like, no matter what the economy looks like. I believe we will live and increase and the Lord will bless us in a myriad of ways. And blessings extend far beyond material gain, since far beyond materials in general. There's many other kinds of blessings that I believe um, we will experience. But I invite you to pray about what these things look like for you. Loving the Lord your God, walking in His ways, and keeping His commands. We really need to know what those things are, what they mean, what they look like, so that we can be intentional about them. And so that we can ask the Lord to lead us into these things. We should desire them. It shouldn't just be something that we we think we know and assume we know. It shouldn't just be a verse we read but we should really desire to, how does the Lord receive, what's the Lord's love language? We should really desire to know how the Lord receives love and to love the Lord and so on and so forth. So I encourage you to maybe follow up on this text and allow the Holy Spirit to continue speaking further to you on these texts and figure out what the Spirit is saying and leading you to do in regards to these things in your own personal life. I believe there's many of you who have been doing this well And you're wondering why all of a sudden there's just been an outpouring of favor or blessing on your life. Um, But I believe there's also many of you who are being convicted right now in your life. And this is the very message you need to confirm um, what you've been feeling. That I think if you will um, lean into this, I think you're going to begin to see breakthrough in your life where you've been praying for breakthrough. I believe you're going to be seeing... Um, victory in areas of your life where you've been praying for victory. Um, and maybe this is the Holy Spirit leading you and guiding you to what he's what He's desiring from you. So anyway, um, I hope that this um, video has been beneficial for you. Um, please be praying for me and my family, if you think of us. And um, I invite you to share this video with anyone you feel like it might be beneficial for. Um, because that is how um, the Word of God um, flourishes. That is a way you can evangelize in the 21st century, um, is by sharing messages that um, might bless another person or edify another person. So I think that's good for today. I would love to hear from you in the comments below or reach out to me anytime. Um, Until next time, as always, God bless you guys.